This was a Friday night in New York. I'm in the studio apartment, no friends are around, the TV isn't working, the stereo isn't working, there's no such thing uh, as the internet. I didn't have $3 in my pocket. What I had was my friend's grandfather's semi-automatic typewriter, which also had paper in it. So the only way for me to entertain myself was to stick a piece of paper in this typewriter. And I did what I'd never done before, which was that I wrote in dialogue. And I stayed up all night. And that was the moment that I fell in love with the sound of my own voice. Um, what is it like directing an Aaron Sorkin screenplay as opposed to others? <laughs> There's a lot more of it. Um, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. They normally, you know, you get a script, it's like 100, 120 pages, and half of that will be descriptions about how to do things, which you then work out how to ignore if you can as a film director. But in this, there's none of that description because there's no room for it. There's just 185 pages of dialogue. Um, dialogue is the least teachable part of writing. It's also the most personal part of writing. I grew up in a great family. Everyone in my family is smarter than I am. Everyone in my circle of friends uh, were smarter than I am. I really enjoyed the sound of, uh, of smart people trying to convince each other uh, of something. Uh, the sound of, yeah, but have you thought of it this way? People playing devil's advocate. And then while that was going on, my parents would take me to see plays all the time. And often I was too young to understand what was happening on stage. They'd like, take me to Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf when I was nine years old or something. But I loved the sound of dialogue. I loved the sound of these great actors and actresses fantastic language crashing into each other. Uh, it sounded like music to me and I wanted to imitate that sound. It's not just that dialogue sounds like music to me. It actually is music. Anytime that you're speaking out loud for the sake of performance, those words, what you're saying, have all of the properties uh, of, of music. Dialogue has rhythm, pitch, and tone, and volume, and meter, and it absolutely has all the properties uh, of music. And so there are musical rules that, that apply. If you're in 4-4 four, four time, there have to be four beats in measure. There can't be three, there can't be five. Uh, uh, so You put time signatures on your dialogue? I do not put them there, you but they are there, which is why the actor will know that if he or she has dropped a word from a line or substituted a two-syllable word with a one-syllable word, it doesn't sound right. Uh, it doesn't sound as good, the joke doesn't work, it's the, the snappy comeback uh, uh, isn't as snappy. When you get an Aaron script, whether it's an episode of Newsroom or, or Jobs, it's, 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 it's daunting. And that there's only one way to do it, and there's a kind of, you know, on, on movies you can paraphrase, you can kind of sort of know it. That's not what you do with Aaron. It, it's like what you do in the theater. You don't change a word. The playwright is king or queen, and forget about ad-libbing. That's what men do. Can't start late. Before you started shooting, you spent, you and David Fincher spent three weeks in a room with your principal actors, with Andrew Garfield, Jesse Eisenberg, yeah. Justin Timberlake, and you went through the script word by word by word, just rehearsing through the lines, talking about the meaning behind every single word on the page. Was it your impression that Fincher normally follows that process, or was it because this was such a dialogue-intensive film that he wanted the actors to spend more time it with the words on the page? It, it was because it was such a dialogue-intensive film. Do you know there are more people with genius IQs living in China than there are people of any kind living in the United States? That can't possibly be true. It is. What would account for that? Well, first of all, there are an awful lot of people living in China, but here's my point. What? How do you distinguish yourself in a population of people who all got 1,600 on their SATs? There, that's the first 10 lines on there. <laughs> yes, I am very physical when I'm writing. I play all the parts. I'm doing a lot of talking out loud. One of the things I think that helps with is you are less likely to write a line of dialogue that's unspeakable. I love you, my dear, like the stars love the, the you know. Once you have to say it out loud, uh, you'll get the message that you can't ask an actor to try to casualize that line. When I'm writing, I am talking out loud. I'm playing all the parts in my head. And if it's going well, I'm jumping up and down uh, from my desk, walking around. I once broke my nose writing. 
I'm constantly trying to start arguments with myself because you're always looking for where's the point of friction. Uh, two people have to disagree on something uh, for, for there to be a scene. Sometimes I invent a piece of dialogue in my head uh, and then I kind of keep going. 20, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours of doing that, I'll realize, yeah, I really should be writing this down. Write down those first two lines of dialogue that I was thinking of. Type the first two lines of dialogue. That's energy uh, uh, at work there. And I really think that energy makes its way onto the page. That once you're loaded up, really write as, as quickly as you can. You know you don't know what you're doing if the, the lines are coming out like, you know, honey dripping from a jar, stop, put it down. Uh, uh, you don't know what you're doing yet. To get one good idea, your mind has to flip through a Rolodex of 50,000 bad ideas to get there. So I go through my days and nights seeing really bad movies in my head. I mean, that, that's, uh, um, and I'm, I'm in that kind of mood. I, I do nothing but stream through bad dialogue, bad scenes, bad everything, until just I accidentally fall on, wait a second, uh, uh, that's what it was I was looking for. When I'm writing, what the words sound like are as important to me as what the words mean. Script every sound uh, that's made, all the verbal hiccups, uh, all the ums and ahs. Jessica has a line in the movie. I was a brat. But the line actually is. Mm, I was a brat. And it's written M M M M M M M. I was a brat. I, I like when people interrupt themselves. I love overlapping dialogue. I love the sound of two people talking at once. Uh, so I'll write dual or even triple uh, a dialogue sometimes. I did it because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when you went bad, you cut coaches. these guys loose! Your Honor, you had markers inside a bony transport! Your Honor, you doctored the logbook! Dan, Captain! You coerced the doctor! Consider yourself in contempt! Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? Uh, I love writing more than anything else. And getting to do what you love is uh, a, a tremendous gift getting recognized for something you've done. And that's the cherry on the icing on the cake.